Hello and welcome to the Modern Golang Programming Course, authored by Mina Andraus and published by Pact Publishing. My name is Mina Andraus. I'm an experienced software engineer with very strong passion for everything related to software. You can go to my website uh, by going to this link, www.minaandraus.com, and then there you can find different types of articles on uh, different topics and a lot of them will be focused on Go. You can also find my GitHub account here. So everything on my GitHub account is open source. I can find a bunch of different Go projects that you can use for code samples uh, in your projects. Perfect. So now that I introduced myself, it's time to talk about our course. So in this video, we will go through a course overview where we talk about what this course is about, how it can benefit you, as well as a project that we'll be building throughout the course. So this course assumes some knowledge of programming languages and some programming paradigms. It then takes your knowledge from there and enrich it with powerful tutorials and deep dives into how to build modern Go applications. And by modern Go applications, I mean applications that can work with modern technologies uh, like time series databases, NoSQL databases, uh, web sockets, web templates, RPC layers, as well as modern architectures like microservices. In the first section of our course, we will go through a practical review of the Go language, where we will cover all the main features of the language and how we could use it to build software. Also, in the first section, we will discuss the microservice architecture, which is a very modern software architecture used as a design of choice for tons of production uh, applications. Then, in the second section, we will take a deep dive into how to build Go software that would work with database technologies. We will be covering plenty of database engines in that section. We'll cover NoSQL databases like MongoDB. Uh, we'll cover SQL databases like MySQL and SQLite, as well as PostgreSQL. And we will cover uh, ORM layers, uh, an ORM layer uh, to be more specific, that works well in the Go language. And we'll even cover time series databases like InfluxDB. By the end of this section, you will have enough knowledge to build persistent layers for your software application capable of interfacing with a diverse selection of uh, database technologies. Then in section three, we'll discuss serialization and RPC. So section three will focus on the protocol buffers technology, which is a modern as well as a wildly popular technology uh, for serialization in modern microservices. Um, so we'll discuss protocol buffers uh, version 2, which is uh, quite common in a lot of applications. And then we'll discuss protocol buffers version 3, which is a new version of protocol buffers and is considered more modern. And then we'll discuss a gRPC, which uses a protocol buffers version 3 with an RPC layer on top to facilitate uh, communication and serialization uh, between applications and microservices. Then, in the last section, we will discuss advanced web applications. So in that section, we'll discuss the Gorilla Web Toolkit, which is a collection of third-party Go packages that offer powerful features for modern and advanced uh, web applications. So we'll learn how to build RESTful APIs, we'll learn how to uh, use WebSockets, we'll learn how to uh, use cookies in our code and we will also learn a third party uh, package to use for web templates by the end of the fourth section you will have sufficient knowledge to build sophisticated web applications using third party tools in the go language throughout the course we will build the dino portal uh, which is basically a software application that serves a fictional zoo that hosts prehistoric animals. So let's assume 
like in Jurassic Park, someone succeeded in uh, getting dinosaurs to live again. And then uh, for us, our task will be to build the software system that will act as an employee portal for people who work uh, in that uh, zoo. So here is how our dino portal would look like. So this would be our main page. And uh, in here we have a welcome message. We uh, use cookies to identify the user as well as a web template to uh, write the message with the username in it and the main page. Uh, then if I go to matrix, we see here the magic of web sockets where we can see real time data getting updated right there um, in our uh, web session. So every single one of those values uh, gets a random value uh, via a WebSocket and we'll cover how to write the WebSocket architecture that would allow this uh, sophistication. So this assumes that we are measuring the heart rates and the blood pressures uh, for dinosaurs. In reality, it shouldn't change that frequently. However, it's a really good showcase for uh, WebSockets. Um, in here, in the info uh, web page, uh, we see how we can use web templates combined with database access to populate data uh, on the web page. So this data, uh, all the data in this table was retrieved from a database and then shown here. Perfect. Now it's time to start learning.